I R Clever. Hey guys, Settlers Saturday here. We're going to be playing some Settlers 3 Gold Edition. Um, now I got this from goodoldgames.com, gog.com. Um, I think it's available for about you know ten dollars or five or six pounds or something like that. Really cheap. Um, and yeah, I'm going to be playing a bit of this every week. Settlers Saturday, like I say. Um, I think I'm going to play the Amazon campaign because I quite like that. Um, we'll skip the introduction. We don't need to see that. And I'm going to choose the Amazons, I think, because that's a quite a nice campaign. Um, and then we'll watch the first introduction, introducing the uh, the level for us. Unbeknownst to him, Horus had been chosen to become the first victim of the Amazon's might. His Egyptian colony had dared to settle on the Amazon's main island, and dear daughter Kinkuro wasted no thoughts on peaceful coexistence. Penthesilea would drive the Egyptians out at all costs, and Horus would pay the bill. Okay, awesome. So, tips and tricks here. This is the um, the uh, map that we're going to be playing on, this kind of female zodiac sign or whatever it is. Um, tips and tricks, spread out to the north as quickly as possible to prevent the Egyptians up there from taking away any room for settling. Um, yeah, as you're saying, use pioneers. I'll be, I'll be doing that definitely. And build towers further up north. Okay. Easy enough, yeah. This this kind of bottleneck here. If if we look on the um, on the map, so I'll I'll be taking this quite well. Okay, let's dive in. Okay, so it looks like we're right at the bottom of that kind of female shape. Um, so let's get started quite uh, right away. Woodcutter's hook and stonecutter's hut. Now, I was thinking the kind of people that are probably going to be watching this video. Now, there's, there's probably going to be two two types of people. It's, it's going to be people that have played the game before and uh, are quite into a bit of... they want to do a bit of reminiscing, so to speak. Or there's going to be people that haven't played the game at all. Um, so, for those people that have played Settlers 3 before, I don't want to be too patronising by how I describe how to play the game, but then again I've got to cater for the other people that might not understand the game at all, so I'm sorry if, if you uh, already understand some of the things I'm explaining here. So we've got a woodcutter's hut to start with, that's going to be cutting down these trees, obviously to get wood, and a stonecutter's hut to get stone, and they're the, the two main building elements in Settlers 3. Um, yeah, and so each class, there's, um, there's the Egyptians, the Romans, the Asians, and in the expansion pack, there's the Amazons. Um, each class has their own, they're very similar, but they have very subtle differences. So, um, for example, in the materials needed here, each race will have different needs for certain buildings, so the Amazons will need slightly more wood than stone which kind of makes sense. Um, I think if you're playing the Egyptians, they'll need slightly more stone than wood for, for the exact same building. Um, so it makes sense that the Amazons need more wood. That kind of works. Um, I'm going to build a medium residence here. Because it's all about, you need loads of people as well. And I'm going to start running out of people soon. Okay, so the wood cutters, uh, the stone cutters is built. Okay. So yeah, I was thinking I'd play the Amazon campaign. Um, I did consider other ones, but I quite like the Amazons. It's, it, I remember playing it when I was very young and quite enjoyed this uh, this race. Um, and yes, yeah, Settlers Three. I think what we are now in in terms of the Settlers series. I think. Settlers 7 is it? Um, I'm not sure if they're thinking about a Settlers 8, but there's definitely a Settlers 7. I think I played Settlers 5 was the last time I, uh, the latest game that I played. But I think this is my all-time favourite game. 
Settlers 3 um, and yeah this came out in 19 1998 I think now I was born in 1990 so it was just the time I started um, I was around primary school then me and my friends played it when we was 10 maybe 9 um, <laughs> so we weren't great at it you know we weren't the best people we played it online quite a bit there and I always lost but I had a lot of fun in losing as well and you can't you can't say that about quite a lot of games I've been playing um, some Call of Duty recently and once people start getting owned and you know um, once people start getting beat they just quit you know they're not having fun so they leave but I always used to have fun on Settlers 3 even when I was being beat so yeah it's a, it's a very good game um, there's been a lot of problems I've, I mean I've got the mission CD I've got the actual CDs from 10 years ago I've, I saw them the other day they're lying around somewhere um, but my computer won't even read that it won't even acknowledge that there's a CD in there um, and then once it like I can rip the files and stuff and it, it's a nightmare to install there's there's a whole number of patches if you want to try and install it from the original one but um, like I say I saw it on gog.com I'll put a link in the description um, and that was a really good game so we, while I'm talking we're going to build a few more woodcutters huts maybe a forester's hut as well okay yeah um, it was a really good purchase like I say it was like I say five pounds or something like that and there was no patches to install it was basically install it and play it which is what I'd like to see okay so now I've built this medium residence people are pouring out of it I'm going to alt click with these pioneers if I can find my mouse there we go alt click and send them to take land now there's three different types of residence you might remember um, small residence medium residence and large residence and um, obviously um, they, all, they all churn out different amounts of people depending on the size of residence you build <coughs> so I've gone with the medium um, while I'm talking here I've also built two woodcutters hut and an extra forester's hut which we're building here now I used to think um, that the, the ratio of woodcutters hut to forester's hut was about 2 to 1 which kind of worked out and say the the woodcutters are obviously chop down the trees and the foresters replace the trees so it's kind of um, it's renewable a renewable source which the, the stone isn't the stone isn't renewable it will never come back once you've mined it I might just build an extra stone cutters as well and here we go this is the uh, the pioneers are taking land here so maybe it might be a bit too soon to build a large residence but I'm going to do it anyway and see how it goes um, and you can speed up production by putting it on the highest priority but I'm not going to do that yet I'm going to check out some of the goods I've got here as well a couple spades there, oh there's one spade left and four hammers there and we're running desperately low actually we've ran out of wood so I think this sawmill is going to be um, used quite a lot it's going to be in high demand there so I might build another one if we've got any saws we've got one more saw uh, I'll squeeze it in um, where shall I put it either one or the other this one will do I guess okay Right, now we've got a bit of mountain here as well, so I might send some geologists. Are these geologists? Three, maybe? Alt click again to tell them to do the job once they arrive there. So, yeah, you send them to the mountains, then you can click find resources and you'll find for coal, gold, gems. Um, iron as well and the main ones we're looking for are iron and iron and coal at this point um, so I'm pretty confident we're going to find something there um, I'm not going to build a toolsmith just yet we'll give that a minute uh, what else can we do while we're waiting 
Maybe a bit more woodcutters, another woodcutters hut, I think. Yeah, that looks that looks good. Stonecutters hut. We've got a stupid amount of stone at the minute, so this um, this stonecutters hut isn't built. But I don't think that matters at the minute. I think we're just going to focus on the uh, the wood production for the time being. And here we can see we've picked up some iron. We've found iron. Um, <laughs> though I don't own the land yet, so I can't put a mine on it yet. Here we go. We'll, I'll make some more pioneers. And we'll capture this land over here. Have I got enough for, um, enough people for five more? Yeah. Okay, there we go. Five more. And so I'll squeeze this toolsmith in as close as possible to the mountains here. Let's um, try and take a bit of land in this direction. And then once this large residence is built, we'll have no problem, no problem at all with um, the amount of people we've got. I'll be able to make 20 or 30 pioneers just to capture all the land we possibly can. Um, yeah, that'll do. That's close enough. Right. Um, could possibly do with another geologist or two. There we go. If you alt click a geologist, it selects all of them in the area, and then alt click on a destination, and that will send you. Um, like I say, that <laughs> they'll, they'll do the job the second they get there. Toolsmith. I'm also going to build um, an iron smelter as well. Yeah, I guess it'll do there. So there's two different kinds of smith. There's the toolsmith, and here in the military buildings, there's the weaponsmith. Um, I mean, they're kind of self-explanatory, really. The weaponsmith will make weapons and for soldiers, and the toolsmith will make tools such as. Um, the axe and say each woodcutter's hut will need one axe um, and I've got two two axes left so I could possibly build two oh no I couldn't I was going to say I could build two more woodcutter's hut but I've got two in production see this bottom number here is the amount that's actually built and then the one above it is um, the buildings that are cu currently being built and see here I've got two woodcutter's hut being built so I've got enough axes for that, but if I wanted to build any more wood, cause so I'd have to produce them from the toolsmith. Okay. <coughs> okay, so it, it is a little bit slow at the start. I think production speeds up. You need to balance the whole game perfectly, and um, it's something I've not been able to do very well um, throughout my time playing Settlers 3. Um, though you pick things up and once you learn it it's kind of like riding a bike you know you don't forget it like I haven't played this game in a while and I can still remember all the all the moves and all the all the buildings and, and stuff like that so I've just placed an iron ore mine there and we're looking for some coal and we've got a bit here so I'm going to select these pioneers here and send them send them there Okay, now the iron ore mine, it, they're going to need food. It's like a its like a whole series of things. To start with, we'll need food for the mine, and then the mine will produce iron or coal. And then we'll take that to the smelter, which will smelt the iron ore into iron bars. And then iron bars will be taken to the toolsmith or the weaponsmith to build weapons. Um, and then we take the weapons to the barracks and one resident will come out of one of these houses and you know be turned into a soldier which I can then command see this is a, uh, a bowman here or a bow woman so to speak so yeah there's this whole chain of, of things that you have to get work in of course with buildings as well you know these will take the resources and, and things like that so there's a lot of things you have to think about see I've already got a little supply I've got 10 um, eight, sorry, that's a stack of of um, pork, and um, so the iron the iron ore mine wants pork. 
the coal mine, if I remember correctly, wants bread. Uh, and then there's a gold mine that wants fish. Um, but the easiest one to get is fish. I mean, the, they'll all accept different ones. Like the the iron ore mine will accept fish, but it won't be as very it won't be as productive. Um, but at the minute, I've got no space to you know start planting crops and and building bakeries and things like that. So I'm just going to go with fishermen and there's there's a tab here where you can see the distribution of goods so if you go on fish currently it's um, the majority is going to the gold mine um, see with iron ore it's all going to the oh sorry with um, meat it's all going to the iron ore mine and then with bread it's all going to the coal mine now I can go back on fish here and tell it to send a little bit to the coal mine and a little bit to the iron ore mine and they will accept it and they'll eat it and it will produce it will produce iron ore very slowly for the time being, but it's better than nothing. Okay, we'll build another mine there, and possibly if I can squeeze one in there. Right. Now, ideally, I'd like a bit more coal because I've only got enough for one one coal mine, which I'll put on a high priority now. So the the builders should focus on on that. We've got no tools, so I'll put a high priority on the toolsmith as well. And this large residence, look at this, it only needs one more load of wood to be built. I think that's what's, slow, that's what's slowing the whole thing down at the minute, we're running out of residence. Because I've taken them all up using these pioneers. So I'll put this one on high priority so it gets built fairly quickly. And this sawmill is almost at capacity. It's got enough room to store eight logs and eight planks of wood. And you see the the wood's being taken almost the second it's being created, but the logs are piling up there. So this sort of the sawmill is going to be critical, but I haven't got the uh, I haven't got the resources to deal with that at the minute. Now one of the things you can do is um, direct where your settlers are. So I want a few more carriers, maybe only 5% will do it. So we've got 25% carriers, 25% diggers and 25% builders. Um, which is obviously 75% and the other 25% will just be standing around not doing much. So I might make 30% carriers. Now you do want a few that are not doing much. For example, um, once you build a new building, like a wood cut, once this woodcutter's hut is built, we're going to need a fresh resident that's just standing around doing nothing to go there and now be a woodcutter. So there need to be a few people standing around, especially once you're building a barracks and you're starting to get troops and things like that. Um, okay, so I think I might have space to start building grain farms and that, but I don't want to put too much stress on the amount of buildings being built. There's all already quite a few incomplete buildings here. So let's see what happens after this large residence is built. Maybe the influx of, of people um, might help this kind of economy uh, speed up a little bit. And yeah, there's loads of coal down here so I'll be able to build a couple more coal mines. I was worried the ratio of coal mines to iron ore mines was uh, <laughs> a little bit awkward you know three iron ore mines for one coal mine isn't a great ratio so we'll, we'll focus on that in a minute and this residence is now built I'll steal a few pioneers so we can capture a bit more land um, we'll take some in this direction it's nice flat land um, that my diggers don't have to spend ages digging out. Grain farm. I'm really eager to build this grain farm. Okay, yeah, I think I will. Let's set, let's see if I've got enough. Because um, you need a scythe. There it is, a scythe for the grain farm. And I've got two. Now, like I was saying, some of the buildings aren't even built yet, so it, it seems a bit um, a bit stupid to keep adding up to adding the amount of buildings that are incomplete. But um, green farms do take a, a little bit of time to get started. 
they have to plant the seeds and then you have to wait for them to grow and then they have to harvest it so it takes a little bit of time so I think it's worth doing it doing it straight away as, as soon as possible almost um, maybe I could squeeze in oh I've got a forester's hut that isn't built yet I think I'll um, Put that on a high priority. Maybe these woodcutters. So we need to speed up this um, this wood production a little bit. Get on top of that. Bef Oops. Sorry about that. Yeah, we need to get on top of that before we do anything else, really. Um, we've got a stupid amount of stone as well. We're we're okay for stone. It's just wood and people really so I've just produced a little bit of coal there the coal mine's got a little bit of bread like when you start the game you start with a few resources like meat and, and bread so that's okay but that'll deplete fast I'll run out of that really really quickly okay so let's just wait for these woodcutters hut be finished. Okay, and this extra sawmill that I just saw being built earlier, um, just it was finished being built earlier. It's now taking a bit of this load and, and speeding up the production of logs. So that's great to see. Hopefully, I should be able to build buildings a lot faster now. Now I've run out of hammers, and there's only one spade left. So what I might do is tell this toolsmith to build say three hammers and they're for the builders you see here there's these ladies here that are actually building the buildings and they require a hammer each you see they've all got a hammer in the hands and these um, these diggers here they require a spade each so it doesn't look like I need um, an extra spade at the minute because there's one left it shows me there's no demand for it but there might be a demand for hammers for the builders. So I'll, I'll try and build them at the first opportunity. Um, okay. I still need loads of wood. Now I'm going to send these... Um, not all of them, I'm going to send say two of these geologists to kind of explore up here and if I remember correctly I mean I haven't played this campaign in a while but I think there's a mountain up here I'll just double check um, now these signs disappear after a while so while they're still here telling me where the best ores are. I'm going to plant a few mines. Um, that looks like a good location there. And this this kind of looks like a bit of a waste of space here but nothing will fit in there so I'll leave that. And I can stop building, I can stop production on these buildings so they're just there for the time being and I, don't, I won't have to worry about trying to figure out and trying to remember where the best places were yeah there is a mountain here so we'll explore a little bit here we go okay grain farm grain farm we are building things it's just taking a little bit of time but once it gets going it's um, it's a lot faster I'm going to squeeze in two more woodcutters hut and because of that I'm going to need two more axes so I'll add to the amount of production here the iron smelt has been built as well and so is, an, so is a mine so we're going well there um, what else? what else needs to be done? maybe one of these coal mines will get one of them started up as well um, and a beekeeper's hut as well. Now the beekeeper's hut is for um, 
at religion. Um, and it's, it's fairly simple, it's basically you uh, you make alcohol and each different race, um, yeah each different race has a different way of making their alcohol so the Romans make wine and you can only, you can only make wine on a hill um, the Amazons here they make mead so I'll get the beekeepers hut which will make honey and then the mead makers hut which uses honey and water and they'll make mead so I'll build that there I'll just demolish that for a second and show you again there's all these dots here and that indicates how flat the land is so all this green land here is really flat and it will barely need any digging out because the the builders will um, the diggers will come along and flatten the land for you so it you know it goes up from green orange amber red um, all the way up to here where it's like a almost like you'd be pretty stupid to build here because it's really really steep but I'm going to do it anyway because it's a perfect spot for it and the diggers don't really have anything else to do because the land is so flat so so I'm going to do that anyway um, I'm going to need a waterworks as well and they they get water out especially if someone comes with a bucket and takes water out of the river now you can only get water from a river like this you can't get it out of the sea um, I guess because the sea is you know salt water and the river is supposed to be fresh water so that kind of makes sense I, I can understand that um, what else do I need uh, I should probably get started on making the meat and bread production so we'll have one more one more baker's hut I think like that um, maybe that's a stupid place for it I've got to be as very efficient with space as well something like that yeah that that works and so this kind of this thing here is where I set the area of where the farm is going to be so that works um, going to need a grain mill to turn the grain into flour hopefully um, ideally it would be somewhere close uh, yeah that works somewhere close to all the grain um, and then a bakery now the bakery would ideally be close to both a water source and the coal so you know something like this will do that's that's good Number two bakeries there one grain mill now the grain mill can can churn grain at an astonishing rate so a ratio of three grain farms to one grain mill that's that's perfectly acceptable because um, they get they grind it up really fast so we've got the bakeries here I'm also going to build a, um, a pig farm here we go possibly another water mill because especially at the start, a uh, water works on especially at the start there's a really high demand for the water see like once you've built a building they can they can hold up to eight buckets of water so um, they just go and grab as much water as they can and and then once a new building's been built it kind of you know there's not enough water so I'm going to build two water works here for that um, oh man I've got a lot of buildings on the go here what do they build bakery now at some point I'm gonna need to build a slaughterhouse as well so that'll that'll kill the the pigs so I can get the meat from it um, but not yet I don't need to do that yet um, I think what I might do, I might put it there just so I don't forget and then stop building on it just so there's a space for it and I don't accidentally build on top of it okay um, possibly it might be time to build a, a weapon smith uh, where's a good place going to be? maybe up here around this mountain, look at this I'm 
There's loads of iron up here. So we're doing really well there. Um, it's all these pioneers. They kind of work themselves into a corner sometimes and then they don't have the AI to to think about going over here, which sometimes that can be the best thing. And again, if you look on the map, you can see the, the big white areas here. Oops. There we go. Yeah, there's a big white area and that's that's where people are. There's another one here. I guess that's troops, yeah. There's some um, some soldiers there. Okay, so we'll keep taking land. Oh, and there's the enemy. There he is. It's another geologist, you know. But you can see the geologists obviously do have an area of sight around them. So the enemy geologist will be able to see me as well. Um, I've got all this land here. Now I've put the beekeepers hut out of the way because the beehives, they're a little bit annoying. Um, well, I find them annoying at least. Um, they're a little bit loud for what they are. I think it's not been, um, you know, it's, I was going to say it's not been coded right, but it's just, just a little bit too loud for for what it is, um, especially when the beekeepers hut, you know, becomes a bit more mature and there's beekeepers uh, hives everywhere then you, you'd come over to here and it would be really loud so that there he is, got, she's got a hive there and you have to put it under a tree as well, that's how it works um, clearly a palm tree, they can put it under a palm tree and that doesn't matter so, um, they can't plant palm trees you can only plant this, this kind of tree here that's all over the place now nice okay um game's not been saved for 30 minutes I'm, I'm going to call it there and um, I'll see you next week with another episode I hope you're going to enjoy this series like say Settlers Saturday so every Saturday I'm just going to be working on some Settlers 3 here ok so um, I'll see you next week yeah.